Hello and welcome to my brand new series of videos that will hopefully get us through the long winter nights. Thank you for tuning in. You knew I wouldn't be away for long. Um, welcome back guys. For those of you new to the channel, my name's Andy Cairns and welcome to Talking Bulls with AC. Uh, not a lot's changed since I last spoke to you really, um, but just thought I'd condense the three different uh, programs I do into one. And it's going to be as long as it is. Uh, it depends on what's been happening. The more that's been happening in the world of Crown Green Bulls, the longer this video will be. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some footage. I know the Griffin is starting back up uh, this weekend. So hopefully I'll be able to get you some footage there and maybe some interviews. I'm hoping to do a few Zoom calls with various bowlers who may be of interest, haven't just got all that sorted yet. And there'll be other bits and pieces going on over the weeks and months until we can get back out bowling properly and I can get doing, well, what I do best, I guess. So thank you so much for joining me and as usual if you enjoy this video please hit that like button and if you're new to the channel and you're not already a Bulls buddy please consider subscribing it's absolutely free of charge and if you do subscribe hit that notification bell for notifications of new content on the channel. So here we are stuck in tier 3. Um, <clears throat> I know there is bowling going on in other parts of the country, but alas, I cannot get there because I'm not allowed to travel. So, you're going to get what you're going to get. Um, so this is the first first episode, called it Talking Bowls. I was going to talk call it something else, beginning with B, but um, that's a bit rude. So it's Talking Bowls with AC. And really, I'm going to be led by you. Um, if there's something you want to see, something I can help you with, something you want me to answer, something you want to explain, uh, you want me to explain, just get in touch, ask the question, and I'll do my very best to sort it out. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll just be showing you what I'm getting up to when it comes to bowling. Um, like I say, I'll be over at the Griffin this Sunday, so I'll get plenty of footage then, and that'll be part of this video next week. Um, if there is any bowling going on um, that I don't know about, and you might want me to come along and, and watch, video, interview, I would be happy to do so. Uh, but again, you really need to be driving it for me, because I don't see everything that's going on. Um, <clears throat> my finger, alas, is no longer on the pulse of Crown Green Bowls. But that doesn't mean I can't be part of it. Um, do a little bit of a catch up before uh, we carry on. My weight loss ended uh, last Wednesday and my Just Giving page is still taking donations. Uh, I'm well over the £2,000 mark. I I think it's about £1,850 and I've got £300 in cash, so £2,150. Whatever we're short of, I will make it up to the next 100 So if it stays at, at what it is now, I'll make it up to 2200 So that's fantastic. Um, obviously no decision has been made yet. I think that's going to be early next month uh, when the final decision will be made. Um, I think there were, there were only about £10,000 short last I heard, which, you know, only £10,000, I mean, you find that down the back of the sofa, don't you, but uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get there. Uh, so thank you everyone again for all the support, that's absolutely wonderful, and um, yeah, feeling good as well, feeling good, got into my old t-shirt that I, don't, I haven't worn for ages, so all good so what i want to do now is i just want to look at some of the um some of the comments that i've got off the youtube videos and it's a little 
new section I'm going to call Comment Corner. Comment Corner. So the comments I'm going to look at today need the gags for these. Now I thought they were from uh, Greg Smith, but when I look, they can't be. They can't be. It's uh, from a user called Greg AVFC69 slash 70. So that makes him slightly older than me. Maybe it's his dad, I don't know. I don't, who knows? So, um, this was in connection to the 1994 county game North Midlands versus Staffs at Bedsworth. And straight off, I recognise the voice of commentator Mike Wakelham. I remember him on Friday evenings on BRMB's Tony Butler sports programmes way back in the mid-70s, giving very expert reports on all the W and W weekend matches. Do you know if he played for a club in Brum, and if so, which one? Well, I thought I knew which club he played for, because I thought he'd put it in this wonderful book that he produced many years ago you can see that i think that's the 1990, 1987 waterloo trophy he's holding so that i think it came out the year after i could just look couldn't i oh, i don't say i thought it was 1988 anyway and in the front of the book he's got a little bit of a thing there and i thought it told me which club he played for it says, Mike Wakelam has been involved with the game of Crown Green Bowls for 40 years. As a player, he has represented the Warwick and Worcester County side and reached final days of the British Crown Green Individual Championship. So it doesn't say which club he plays for, but he did turn out for Warwick and Worcester at some point in his long and in illustrious career. Um, by the way, if you can get hold of this book... It's well worth a read. It is a little bit out of date now because obviously it's from the 80s. I think, it, yeah, 1988 it came out because it only gives you results up to 1987. Uh, and it is, as always, a really good read. There's a lot of good old books out there. Um, but, yeah, so that was Mike Wakelam. And then he asked another question on uh, one of my Ask Andy's episode 26. I think it was, no, episode 21, so blast from the past. Thanks, Andy, for that fascinating account of very early days of Crown Green Bowls. Do you know the names of the top players back then, and did one or two get seriously rich? Well, another old book that if you can get your hands on, absolutely gold dust this. It's full of amazing stuff. Uh, I think it was published 1969, possibly. Um, I know the Talbot had just been knocked down. It cost 22 and 6, whatever that is in proper money. Yeah, 1969. Uh, and John Voss did um, bring out a, a, an updated version of this book, I think in the mid 90s. Uh, it must have been because I think I was mentioning it at one point, so it must have been mid 90s. Um, and it really is fascinating. So, chapter four, the professionals. It says, old timers will tell you that the golden age of bowling was around the turn of the century. This was the time when even if this far, these far off days, bowlers could make up to 40 pound a match and the real greats could earn over 500 pounds a year, sometimes approaching 800 pounds. Now I looked on the Bank of England um, inflation calculator and in 1880, so not too far off the turn of the 20th, 19th to 20th century, £10 was the equivalent of £1,200. So, they were play £500 a year. You were looking at £70,000, £80,000. £800 a year, £100,000. That's a pretty good wage for a crown green bowler. Forty pounds a match, four times twelve is forty-eight, so about five five grand a match. That's pretty good, isn't it? Five grand a match. And these games were played all over the Lancashire mainly. Uh, and before there was any associations like the, the the panel, the British Professional Bowling Association. Uh, licensees used to put challenge matches up between top players and these are some of the names in the 1880s who were around and who were earning those sorts of money 
James Rothwell, Gerard and Richard Hart, Edward Barton, Tom Meadows, George Beatty, Thomas Taylor, also known as Oud Toss, Dan Greenalge, John Peace. And uh, the last one, John Peace, he was actually one of the very few Yorkshiremen who made it on the professional scene. And he was called as called John T. Toss, which was fantastic. Um, so, those were the sorts of games uh, that were being played. 40, 50 pounds, even 100 pounds a match. There's a game here at the Bamfalong Hotel Wigan. In 1900, James Rothwell played George Beatty, who received five starts at 81 up. They used to play these incredibly long games, 101 up, 71 up, 81 up, whatever they, they decided. They also sometimes split them over two greens, so they'd play the first half on one green, the other half on another. And of course, the longer the games, the longer the crowd were there. So, five started 81 up. The stake was £340. And I've just said £10 is the equivalent of 1200 That's a lot of money. That's an awful lot of money, which was a colossal sum to rest on the result of a bowling match and was probably a record. So there you go, £340. And <clears throat> you could buy a house, you could buy an, uh, a house for around £180 to £200. So maybe they were, they were paying for maybe the, co the price of two houses there. And those were the, the real players, Gerard Hart. Uh, George Beatty, players like that, round about the 1900s. And the Sporting Chronicle, which was the paper back then that everyone read, they were full of these money matches. December the 3rd, 1902. A match will take place today between two Blackpool gentlemen for £40. 61 up, neither bowler to send a wood before they start. Uh, Queen's Hotel, Bradley Fall Bowling. Competition, uh, £50 handicap for working players, no pros allowed. There used to be this big divide between pros and amateurs. And even, uh, I remember as a kid at Gag Hills, their, um, their floodlit event used to have on. Their first rule was no professional bowlers allowed. Um, and there was this real disparity between the two. Uh, October 24th, 1908. Queen's Hotel, Bradley Fold. James Rothwell and Teapot play Tuesday next. Teapot receives three. Wagon and Horses, Hollywood, Saturday next. Tit of Horwich and Borden of Hollywood, Hollingwood play 71 up for £30. Those are amazing sums and you just can't believe that the game has gone from that level of money. They were, they were the real top sportsmen of the time footballers weren't earning that footballers were earning a pittance in comparison cricketers didn't earn that they they were amateurs there were a few professionals but mostly amateurs the professionals got paid a few quid crown green bowlers really were at the start of the 20th century the sports people the people who were earning big money you know when you're earning 500 pounds a year and the average wage is Twenty pounds or whatever. I, can't, I, I never didn't look that up, but considerable amounts of money. You, you're talking big bucks, and I know even in the early twenty-first century, uh, twentieth century, sorry, twenty-first century. That's now. Um, reading memoirs uh, of, of an old professional bowler, being able to buy a business with their winnings, being able to buy houses. These people earned lots of money. They were could be very wealthy and that's what, what the job was they were bowlers they were professional bowlers how we've gone from that to this is a a very very uh interesting path and i think you could debate it for hours on end there's all sorts of socio-political uh things that have happened that have impinged on professional crown green bowls but um I find it fascinating. I find the history of bowling absolutely amazing and I, I can't just get my head round what it must have been like to be a bowler back then, a, prof a professional bowler. 
um, travelling all over Lancashire and Cheshire, sometimes into Yorkshire, playing for these big money matches. It must have been an incredible thing. Um, alas, those times are gone and we are where we are and all we can do is carry on and see if we can turn things around. So, anyway, thanks Greg, AVFC69-70, thank you for your comments, thank you for getting in touch and thank you for being the first person um, to be involved with Comments Corner. Guys, if you want, if you want uh, your questions answering about any of the videos I've put on YouTube, please leave a comment and I will pick it up. Comment Corner. Okay, something um, that caught my eye the other day in the newspaper. I read the Daily Mail online. It's it is what it is. It's a reasonable source of, of uh, information. But there was a story on there that um, it was about flat green bowls. But to me, it highlights something that one could be a problem, or two could be an opportunity for us. So I'll just I'll just read a little bit of of the article. Bowled over by prejudice, trans woman of three years, sixty seven. Oh, of course it's gone off, is banned from ladies' bowls team until she has sex change surgery. Stella Moore, 67, has lived as a woman in Hailing Island, Hampshire, for three years. She joined her local bowls club nine months ago and it helped lift her from depression. Portsmouth and Dick District Women's Bowling Association rules said the sport rules meant that she had to have a sex change surgery or produce a certificate to prove she was a woman. So, with the rise of, of transgender issues, and I know from working in a school, there are more and more young people um, really confused about their gender, their sexuality, everything basically, this will become an issue that will at some point involve crown green balls there uh, and i'll be honest with you i i asked a question a couple of years ago um of um a bcgba management uh member of the management team as to what would happen if well let me start again gender fluidity is a big big thing with young kids not necessarily young kids but young people at the minute and for those who aren't involved with with young people on a regular basis that might have passed you by but there's a rising instances of of people who are gender fluid so they wake up in the morning and de depending on how they feel that is the gender they are going to be that particular day for some people it's long term and they feel as though they are born the wrong sex and they will look for gender reassignment uh, and, and go down a sex change route but there are people who, who say that they are gender fluid and they are backed up by doctors um, and schools also help them in, in, in living that particular life so obviously flat green balls and crown green balls has fairly distinct rules about you know open competition men's bowling ladies bowling and i asked the question what would happen if i decided that i'm gender fluid i'm not saying it will happen i i feel as though i am a man uh, so what would happen if if somebody came along and said well actually you know i've realized that i am gender fluid and one day i might be a man the following day i might feel i'm a woman or one day i might feel as though i'm neither i'm in the middle or how do we have rules in place that would facilitate that or do we have rules that would prevent that because obviously at the minute lgbtq plus uh, I think I've missed a few letters out there, is a big thing, it's a rising thing, about 3% of the population uh, consider themselves to fall into that category. What What is there in place? Are we open? Are we, are we able to facilitate that for people? Or is it, no, no, you, you're, man, you're male or female, because if, if that's what it is, we obviously, we are... Um, barring people from playing and 
some would say we are being transphobic. So I don't know. I don't know. This could be a, a problem going forward. Um, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, could we be accused of being transphobic? Or is this an opportunity for us as a sport to embrace the LGBTQ plus community? To welcome them with open arms and say, please come play this sport. On a different but connected topic, are we missing the boats with migrants who have come to the country? You know, bowls is played in, in areas where there's a high Asian uh, population or Polish population, uh, people of colour. But yeah, I can think of maybe only, in all the time I've bowled, maybe four or five people of colour or BAME uh, bowlers who, who actually play the sport and I think this is a, an amazing opportunity that for us if we could get out into the communities and advertise our game I think it's some uh, an opportunity we've missed for all these years I've never seen any, uh, any Chinese playing bowls for instance imagine if, if China Chinese people got hold of Crown Green Bowls like it did with snooker and golf. Snooker's absolutely enormous in China. We've no uh, no presence anywhere outside of outside of uh, the North and, and Midlands, I guess. Um, but why aren't there any Chinese people that live in this country bowling? Why aren't there any BAME? Bowlers, what, what have we deliberately dis, have we deliberately ignored them? Do, do we not want our game to grow? Is this the the way we need to be going, rather than trying to get young people involved? And you know my feelings. I don't necessarily think that is the way forward. But rather than concentrating our efforts on young people, why aren't we concentrating our efforts on getting people from different? different communities to playing bowls are we not welcoming are we too stuck in our ways to get new people from from new new places into our game um, are we racist as a game are we racist the people playing it are we too stuck in our ways to accept people of, of different colours into the sport I don't know. I'm just asking the question. I would say that, you know, or the the number of of, of BAME bowlers is is staggering. I'm amazed that we haven't got more people uh, from those communities into the sport. Or is it? Are they not interested? Have we tried and have we failed? I don't think we've tried. I think that's the answer. I think we can be very unwelcoming as a sport. Um, I I remember as a kid, you know, yes, I'm going back 30, 40 years, but they didn't want kids on the green. There's very few places that do, and only the ones that could see that their club members raging and dying, and they wanted to bring in new new younger members, and and they've prospered and survived. But is this a is this a way we need to go? Do we need to try and attract members of? You know the Polish. There's, there's, we have an, an area in, in Rosendale. There's lots of Polish people live here now. Bet they don't even know the game exists. Same with the Asian community. We have a large Asian community. They wouldn't know it, it's around. They might have. No, they wouldn't have even come across it. I guess they wouldn't have even come across it because all our greens tend to be hidden away behind big walls and fences and hedges. So, I think. Personally, I think that's the way we need to go. As a sport, we need to look at opening our doors to anyone and everyone. And I've always said this this sport is a sport for all. Anyone can, can come and play and compete. You, get, you could get a 10-year-old competing with an 80-year-old. Men and women playing the same competitions, the same leagues. 
we should be opening everything up rather than getting our little men, our men's only leagues and our ladies only leagues and our little men's comps and little women's comps. Why aren't we just bowling? Why aren't we just all on the same green playing the same sport? What? Why? Why have we got to the point where we want to stay in our little? I'm going to use the word bubble. I don't really want to. Why are we staying in our little bubbles when it comes to bowls? I just think we need to get rid of everything. Just get rid of it all and just bowl. Welcome whoever wants to play. Get our sport out there. Get it advertised. Get it on in local newspapers. Get it on local radio. Whatever. Come and play our sport. And I've said it once and I'll probably say it another 20 times before you get bored of me. If they don't see it, if people don't see the sport, they're not going to play it. They can't play it because they don't know it exists. And that is our problem. Whew, God, that was a bit of a rant, wasn't it? Um, I'm not sure where that came from. Oh, yes, Daily Mail. Yeah, it does have that effect on me, I must admit. So, guys, sorry, he's, he's waffled on a bit. I don't know if you agree, disagree. Please comment below your thoughts on the issues I've raised there. You might disagree with me, you might agree with me, you might think I'm talking a load of tribe. I don't mind, as long as it gets you thinking about our sport and how we can improve it, that's all that matters. This isn't how I want this video to be every week. I'm not going to be talking to you like this all the time. There will be other things going on, and it's, but it's just going to be a way to keep in touch, to keep you entertained, to keep your minds ticking over. I will put out videos at least once a week one video like this I'll try and get some retro videos on as well but those I can't promise at the minute so I really hope you've enjoyed this first episode and I hope uh, if you have any comments good or bad please leave them in the comment section below and I'll, I will see them I'll see all of them if you've enjoyed watching it please hit that like button and I hope you tune in next week so see you next week uh, Stay safe, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.